Let's try that again, because fortunately, Cassidy is brilliant and texts me to say, like, hey, you're muted. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Live with Virginia Normal. I'm J.M. Padini, the Development Director for the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws and the Executive Director of your state chapter, Virginia Normal. As always, we're going to talk all things cannabis in the Commonwealth and answer your burning questions live. It's July 15th, 2022, and that means that new marijuana laws took effect here in Virginia two weeks ago, and they could be impacting you. Maybe they already have. Drop your comments in the chat now. Let us know if you've noticed uh, a difference, if you've had any consequences, and what you think of these new laws. Got any questions? let us know. Hey, while you're there, take a minute to go ahead and hit that like, follow, and subscribe link wherever you're watching us. Hey, Jason. Right, Jason? Good thing Cassidy was there to rein me back in. This is what happens when you do a show four hours early. Hey, Michael. Hi, Sherry. Hello, Erica. (laughs) Rachel, I don't think we're going to call Virginia the can of wealth anytime soon. But if we do, I'm going to attribute it to you. Hey, Tim. Good to see you. Hello, Zach- Zacharias. Ah, look, we're seeing new people, regulars and new people at this weird time. So glad you were able to, you all were able to tune in early. All right. So I know we've been talking about these new changes. Um, Cassie is going to go ahead and share uh, a story that the news leader did, which is pretty similar to um, the, the, the PR that we wrote uh, relating to the changes in laws. Um, but it does highlight an opinion that I put out there that, listen, these new marijuana misdemeanors really demonstrate the fundamental lack of understanding about cannabis policy in Virginia. And I think that if you are an elected official and your job is to change laws, to make laws, you ought to know what the existing laws are. Now, don't worry. There are uh, experts in cannabis policy in Virginia that can help you with this. Uh, But when you don't ask and you do weird things, then you get new laws like the ones you just passed that do nothing but disproportionately impact consumers and particularly consumers of color. The reason why is this. Possession with intent to distribute marijuana is illegal in any amount. Sure, there is a rebuttable presumption that possession of up to one ounce is for personal use. But it's just that. It's just a rebuttable presumption. Law enforcement is more than capable of demonstrating that someone who has a one ounce or less than one ounce and is dealing is in fact dealing. But the way this new law is written, uh, everything is marijuana. Everything. That's that's the word in code right now in Virginia is marijuana. There's not a different measurement for edibles. There's not a different measurement for concentrates. Sure, we'll get there at some point. That's not where we are right now. The Cannabis Control Authority has not yet promulgated equivalent possession amounts for these other types of products. So everything is just called marijuana. So sure, walking down the street, four ounces of flour or over four ounces of flour, you know, that's that's maybe a lot. Um But if you have, let's say, cultivated cannabis legally at home in Virginia and you decided to make some brownies, right, those brownies can very quickly exceed that four ounce limit. And that's the real problem with how this law is written. We've heard this excuse that, oh, we we had to crack down on, on illicit sales. Okay, well, there's already a law in place for that. And writing another law doesn't help law enforcement enforce existing laws. So it's wild that this happened. Um, It'd be super neato if people who were going to write cannabis policy consulted experts before they made bad choices. But, you know, this is who you've elected, Virginia. And elections have consequences. (sighs) Ah, Now I'm going to catch up on some of your comments because, boy, you all have a lot to say. Hey, Elizabeth and Joshua and John, thank you. John, not because I'm vain, though I am. I'm going to just drop this up here because I have a joke with my barber about um, how you all 
very regularly have something to say about my hair. So, uh, hey, Elliot at High Point. See? Wait. See? I told you, man. Um, Rachel, I'm glad you're getting those notifications so that you know when we're live streaming. You can get notifications like Rachel does by hitting the like, follow, and subscribe button wherever you're watching. Uh, <laughs> John, you're hilarious. Um, hey, Marty in North Carolina. I hope you have connected with North Carolina Normal. If you haven't yet, you can find them on the Normal website at normal.org slash chapters. Be sure you get connected with them. Oh, hello in Puerto Rico. We love to have a normal chapter in Puerto Rico. So reach out, chapters at normal.org. <laughs> Sherry, I'm glad uh, you got your notification as well and didn't miss the show. Uh, it's summertime and that means sometimes you have to go on vacation. So we're doing the show a little early today. Gave you warning last week, so hope I didn't disappoint too many people. <laughs> All right, now, um, hey, keep asking your questions about Virginia cannabis policy. Just drop those in the chat right now. But let's talk about what finally happened. Listen, we were all sitting around waiting for the U.S. House of Representatives to vote on the NDAA package, and they finally did. Uh, they voted yesterday in favor of must-pass legislation, the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, this legislative package does include safe banking as an amendment. Uh, and in fact, this vote marks the seventh time that House members have advanced uh, this language to the Senate, uh, either as an amendment or a standalone bill. And it's the second time that it, uh, it's been included uh, in the provisions of the NDAA. So now we have to see what the Senate does. Um, there are several other marijuana related amendments that were included in the package, um, such as language from the Veterans Equal Access Act that would permit VA doctors to issue medical cannabis recommendations to uh, their patients in states where it's legal. So uh, check out the normal blog on this. Stay tuned. Uh, let's see what happens when it hits the Senate. Oh, hey, Daniel in Kentucky. Daniel, you're in luck because we have a fantastic chapter in Kentucky. Uh, please be sure you get in, in contact with Kentucky Normal. Uh, Lauren and Matthew are doing excellent work there. Hello, hello, Tamara at Cruel Consequences, Portraits of Misguided Law. Welcome back. We've missed you. Um, hey, if you have been uh, impacted by marijuana criminalization, did you lose your job, your house, uh, your kids, all any of the other terrible collateral consequences that come with a marijuana arrest? Um, Cruel Consequences wants to tell your story. And you can connect with them at cruelconsequences.org. This is an art project that is supported by the Normal Foundation. I encourage you all to take a minute and check it out. And if you or someone you love has been impacted by marijuana criminalization, hey, point them in that direction and let them tell their story there. Oh, hey, Erica in Mexico. Uh, would love to have a normal Mexico chapter, reach out. Yeah, Wade, four hours earlier. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> hey, good to see you. All right. Um, there are several marijuana related ballot initiatives and voter referenda that uh, are hoping to qualify for November 
2022 ballots. My colleague, Jax James, will be talking about this later today when she does her live update. You can also read all about it on the normal blog right now. I can see Cassidy's going to drop that link in the chat for you all. Thank you so much. Look at that, like magic. Um, last week, for those of you who didn't follow along, uh, last week, the Cannabis Control Authority Board of Directors met. Um, they did discuss the need to quickly promulgate these um, equivalent possession amounts. So they are working on that. They do understand that it's problematic uh, that this new misdemeanor law was enacted and that um, there, those equivalency amounts just don't exist yet. So what we did uh, was provide the equivalency amounts that were included in uh, legalization legislation in the 2022 General Assembly. We did this because there was already consensus around these amounts. Now, keep in mind, these amounts would be really um, specific for the time being to criminal prosecution. Now, when we get finally to adult use retail sales, those amounts could change. So when they promulgate these possession amounts, don't get super worked up about how you need to buy more. Okay, because this is not about that. This is about the need to establish some amounts so that people aren't being arrested for having two brownies um, that they made from something they grew at home. All right. Oh, Ronson. Ronson with the deep thoughts already. And yeah, uh, you're right. Like, hey, make, look, Sherry, I, I keep starting to put this on the wall. And then I'm like, no, because you're going to want to take it down. And you're going to want to hold it in front of your face like this. Because listen, you have got to make good choices, friends. What you do um, impacts our ability to change cannabis policy. Um, so look, uh, make good choices, please. Uh, and talk to your elected officials. All right. We're going to talk in a second about why cannabis policy isn't really going anywhere in Virginia right now. Uh, but first, I want to highlight what Fawn said. And yeah, absolutely. So, I, you know, we've seen... Um, you know, activists and even other organizations who know better um, say wild things like, oh, you know, they don't support safe banking or it's not good enough. And hey, to break it to you, kids, that's not how it works. Uh, you don't just demand everything. And then when you get, you know, not what you want, take your ball and stand at the corner, because that must be a mighty pillow of privilege upon which you have your, rest your head at night to be able to be like, well, I'm not getting everything, so I'm going home. Um, policy change happens incrementally whether you like it or not. And, you know, as, as Fonz is pointing out here, as Normal has said repeatedly, this would absolutely, um, access to banking would lend more credibility and transparency to uh, cannabis industry in Virginia. And it's something that is good for consumers. So, yeah, we need to pass safe banking. We need to pass a lot of things, but that doesn't mean we don't need to pass that also. All right. Uh, hey, if you're still watching, go ahead and hit that like, follow, or subscribe button wherever you are. And I'm going to tell you about two things. I'm going to hold this in my fingers so I don't forget. We have a ton of new stuff in the Virginia Normal Facebook shop. Um, it's super fun. And you guys have been scooping up this new merch left and right. Uh, but one of the things that you might not have seen yet um, for those of you who are much younger than I am, I bet you wear Crocs. And wouldn't your Crocs look great with this little charm on it? Uh, not only do we have this one in store right now, but we have a ton more coming. So if you want to snatch up this um, gibbets, this Croc charm, it's in the Virginia Normal Facebook shop right now. I can see Cassidy. Just drop the link in the chat to you. It's going to come in this super fun package because we've got jokes. And uh, it's going to come with a sticker because I'm super nice. Uh, listen. <laughs> Thank you, Zacharias. I love it. 
<laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about. Um, another thing, hey, I wore this shirt not because I like this color on me, I don't, but I wore this shirt today to um, remind myself to let you all know that we're heading to Key West in December. We always head to Key West in December for the normal Key West legal seminar. Um, whether you're an attorney who needs continuing legal education credits, uh, hey, we've got those available for any state that requires them. Uh, fully accredited CLEs at this legal seminar, all focused on cannabis, of course. Uh, but this is also a, a great opportunity for non-lawyers to uh, connect with policy and legal experts from around the country. Uh, would love to see you all there. And if you are thinking about coming to Key West, go ahead and book your accommodations now. Uh, the event is at uh, the Pier House Resort and Caribbean Spa in beautiful Key West, Florida. There are rooms available there. There are rooms available at surrounding hotels, resorts, and Airbnb, but they sell out quickly. So um, get some friends together, book early, make a trip out of it. It's a beautiful place and it's a really incredible legal seminar and we'd love to see you there. So uh, you can find out more at normal.org slash Key West. Um, Andrea, I'm gonna pretend like I know that off the top of my head, <laughs> but I don't. Um, the legal seminar is December 1st through 3rd, that would be helpful, right, um, in Key West, and a non-lawyer ticket is $450 for um, normal legal committee members. Uh, that's going to be 550 because they're going to get CLEs with it. And for private counsel who are not uh, NLC members, it is 650. Uh, public defenders get the reduced rate of 450 as well. You can find all of that and more at normal.org slash Key West. Hmm. Charlie, let's take a look at this. Ah, Charlie wants to know if there's any possibility the existing medical dispensaries could sell can of butter for infused oil for baking. <laughs> Thinking about that. Um, maybe. So I know that a lot of patients right now will buy concentrate products from the medical dispensaries and then use that to infuse their products at home. Um, I think, you know, there's a possibility that they could, because we just, uh, on July 1, some new laws took effect that got rid of this old, um, essentially ratio language. Previously, there was a requirement that each dose, each single dose, think of it like one tablet, okay, for visualization. Um, each dose had to have at least five milligrams of THCA or five milligrams of CBD. Got rid of that, finally. Um, and now the only restriction is that each single dose can have no more than 10 milligrams of THC. Got a message on uh, Facebook about, about uh, strength in medical products, and I said, hey, please tune in and ask me this question. And I don't see them asking uh, but I'm going to mention that we tried this year, well, in 20, the 2022 session, we tried to increase from 10 mg per dose to 20 mg per dose. But there is a Republican senator who is on the Ed and Health Committee in the Senate who was going to oppose that. And we do not have votes to spare in the Senate, and we do not have votes to spare in the House. And he could have influenced the House's vote um, on that as well, or opposition to it. So ultimately it just uh, was removed from the bill. We could try again in 23, but we'll have to see where the appetite is um, for that. But back to Charlie's question about, could they sell butter or infused oil? I mean, I think the oil is easier. Um, 
you know, easier to explain that this is a product that, you know, is dispensed in a dropper. Um, it can be a little more concentrated, but um, yeah, I don't know about the butter. That's an interesting question. But oil, yeah. And I think that, um, you know, there are definitely tinctures available at some of the uh, processors. I'll, I'll float your question around, Charlie, and see who says what. Um, George, I do not know off the top of my head how many um, CLE hours are approved for each state yet. But George, you can send us a message on LinkedIn or you can send me an email at nlc at normal.org with the state um, that you want to know about. And I will check our records and see how many credits um, your state or states have approved. <laughs> hey, Rick, that's very kind of you. Um, Rick, someone actually sent us a video on Facebook and said, um, this is wild. Here's an attorney saying things that are completely wrong. And in fact, I had um, a journalist call me yesterday and ask if I had an attorney who could speak to a specific issue. And I had to think about it. And I was just like, you know, I really don't. That's just, they're just, that's not, while that's a subject matter um, that we have expertise in at normal, it's just, it's too new. And it's not something that I think that, um, you know, attorneys automatically just have knowledge about because they are attorneys. No offense to attorneys. Some of my favorite people are attorneys. <laughs> uh, but this stuff is complicated. Um, Ronson uh, wants to know about how about folks who need to um, take more than 10 megs, um, like maybe 40 megs. So the good news is that while the individual dose, meaning like the, the single unit, is capped at 10 megs right now, there's no limit on dosage. So for example, um, when you think about taking um, ibuprofen, for example, each tablet is only 200 milligrams but maybe you take um, three tablets in total. So dose, dosage. <laughs> um, hey, Wade, you're not wrong there. Wade says, why have anyone other than qualified uh, physicians make recommendation on how much a dose of medicine is? Um, I mean, in this instance, uh, Physicians don't necessarily have um, medical cannabis expertise. However, at the pharmacy, which is what all of our dispensaries are, they're all technically pharmacies. There is a pharmacist on staff that does have specific education in medical cannabis. And so they are able to um, assist patients in, in determining the best products and um, dosages for their healthcare needs. Hmm. Um, hey, Ed. Ed wants to know um, if under the, it's technically called record sealing right now, if under, if under the record sealing process in Virginia, is there anything for growing, which would be manufacturing, um, or is it purely possession that can be expunged? Yeah, so the, the, the records that were automatically sealed in 2020 and in 2021 were specific to possession. Um, I will have to go back and check which marijuana felonies will be, will qualify for um, petition based sealings. Um, it, that might be where um, manufacturing falls in, but I, I don't know off the top of my head. So I'll have to go back and check on that, Ed. Um, feel free to shoot us an email to remind me. <laughs> um, yeah, Daniel, they could package a brownie and say it's two servings, but we aren't dispensing brownies in Virginia um, at this point in time. Um, so far, the products are 
the edible ones are closely related to the types of edible products you would find in a traditional pharmacy, like a soft chew um, or a gelatin cube. <laughs> That's what we call gummies. Um, and I think that one of them has a chocolate product, but you know, other medicines come in chocolate form as well. So. Hey, humble hydroponics, you should let um, Robert in Oakland know that he ought to, number one, join the normal legal committee. Number two, come get CLEs in Key West. Yeah, I, I agree, Ronson, that it's problematic um, from a financial aspect uh, when it comes to limited strength of products. And, and that's an argument that we've made in the General Assembly. But that doesn't fix people like that one senator who's just like, no, no. Yeah, I'm just going to park that right there because Tamara is right. Um, yeah, there, there's some, some sloppy media in Virginia, not the regular ones that report on us um, or after talking to us, so you all know who you are. But there are some journalists out there that, um, you know, write about journalists that write about cannabis policy in Virginia, like it's a joke. Um, you know, they, they write about it because it's click, it's, it's going to get them clicks because um, they think it's spicy to say marijuana and weed and pot, but they're giving bad information and that's lazy and irresponsible. So do better. Um, Fonz, we don't, we don't have, uh, limitation on botanical cannabis, which is what flower is called um, in the medical program in Virginia. Um, and we're not going to because that's absurd. It's only, you know, we only have that um, on an individual dose. So I think that's where it's going to stay. Hey, Jay, welcome to the show. Hey friends, Jay wants to know if we're going to open up adult use sales anytime soon. CJ, the problem is that Virginians um, elected a Republican controlled House of Delegates in November. So Virginians who wanted to see adult use um, move forward shot themselves in the foot. And now we're all stuck in this position. And I'm not saying this to sound partisan. I'm just pointing out the reality. You've elected Virginia, a House of Delegates that does not want to advance adult use legalization. And I did promise we would talk about this. So the only way, I cannot stress this enough. People want to know like what the secret is to this, that, and the other. I mean, look, Jay's asking this question right now. And I'll tell you, Jay, the only way legalization, uh, the remaining parts of legalization, meaning licensing, um, adult use dispensaries. The only way that we can begin retail sales for adult use in Virginia is if the Speaker of the House, Speaker Todd Gilbert, is a delegate. Um, the only way that we can move forward is if Speaker Gilbert lays down the law to his committee chairs and says, we are going to do this. He's in charge and he has the power to say, we are going to do this to establish what the legislative priorities are for the caucus. There is not one single committee in the Virginia House of Delegates today that would allow, more specifically, there is not one single committee chair, right? If the, Maybe there is enough votes on a committee, but the chair will not allow such a bill to advance through their committee to the floor. And, and that's the problem with whom Virginians have elected to represent them in the Virginia House of Delegates. You've elected a, a chamber that does not want to advance adult use uh, regulation. They want to, for some absurd reason, continue ceding control of cannabis in the Commonwealth to untaxed, unregulated, illicit operators. So there's this fantasy out there that, um, you know, when you can't 
legally purchase cannabis in Virginia that you just buy it from your friend. Like it's just your, your friend who grows some plants next door and he's your buddy. Virginia's $1.8 billion illicit cannabis market is not your friend who grows weed. That's organized crime. So this is who your elected representatives are, are actively choosing to hand over control of cannabis in Virginia to untaxed, unregulated, illicit operators. That does not in any way provide for public and consumer safety. And the only way short of an election that this can change is if Speaker Gilbert says we are going to move forward with licensing adult use retail, full stop. Um, hey, this is a good question from Tamara. She's bringing up that in DC, um, DC city council just voted to allow adult patients in, in the district to self-certify that they are medical cannabis patients, meaning they don't have to get a physician's uh, recommendation any longer. And will we do this in Virginia? Probably not. The reason that there was such appetite for this in DC is because Congress is not all of Congress, but select members in Congress are preventing the District of Columbia from enacting regulated adult use retail sites. They are preventing DC from spending one single dollar enacting adult use retail. So this is a way to essentially get around that and to say, hey, are you an adult who wants to shop at a licensed, legal, regulated dispensary? Well, you may now self-certify yourself um, as a medical cannabis patient. Then they have to register with um, Abra, with whatever, you know, that's their regulator. They have to register as a medical cannabis patient. In Virginia, we sort of have the opposite. You just get the written certification from your practitioner, and then you don't have to register. Um, hey, John, this is a great question. Um, John wants to know if if you're a patient in Virginia, do you have to get the card in order to have um, employment protections? The answer is no, you don't, because employment protections in Virginia are not tied to the card. They are specifically afforded by law, by code, by the written certification issued by a registered practitioner. So that is sufficient. Um, Daniel, this is an interesting question. Daniel was asking if someone's on probation and they get caught growing plants, would they violate parole and face jail time again? Possibly. First of all, the medical card doesn't have anything to do with it. There's no special rules. There's no special um, laws for people on parole related to medical cannabis. Your parole officer essentially, and the judge can say what you can and can't do. You might not be able to drink alcohol. They could also say you can't use cannabis. So while it's legal, when you're on probation or parole, it could be different. <laughs> Make your brownies fluffy, hilarious, Ronson. Um, Jay wants to know if medical, if we have reciprocity in Virginia yet for out of state patients, and we do not. Um, what we do allow in Virginia is for someone who is not a resident but is living in Virginia. So you're in the military, you're a snowbird, you're going to school here, you're going to college, you. Um, are here for, you know, a few months for work, those folks can register. You just have to prove that you're actually living in the state, like a, a utility bill or a lease or something. But you have to either be a legal resident of Virginia or actually living here in order to participate um, in the medical cannabis program at this time. Hopefully we can work on reciprocity in 2023 
because it will move over, the medical program will move over to Cannabis Control Authority, and that's an agency that's better suited to um, extend the more typical um, regulations that we see surrounding medical cannabis programs in other states. Like things like expanding licensing for new dispensaries, um, for you know, allowing reciprocity, things like that. Rick has good advice. Vote and then talk to your uh, elected officials, whether you voted for them or not. Daniel, look, we, Daniel says, even in the National Senate, I worry about Joe Manchin. I can see him voting against it because he's always going to be the one Democrat in name only. We have two of those in the Virginia Senate. We have two people. We have our own Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema in the Virginia Senate. Two Democrats who are wild cards. And we can't have that. We have a very narrow majority. So, yeah, man. Yeah, Daniel, our laws are confusing. What we really need is for Congress to act and end the federal prohibition of cannabis and allow states to continue setting their own policies free from threat of federal interference. Yeah, Ed, it's really going to be specific to each probation officer. Ed says, my probation officer told me this last Wednesday that as long as it's not specified otherwise because it's legal, there is no issues. And that's really going, your mileage may vary. Anyone who's on probation, please talk to your PO. If they have questions, you can send them our way. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joel, you've got jokes. Um, I don't know if you heard earlier, but I wore this shirt on purpose so I would remember to tell people about the normal Key West legal seminar, not because I think it's my best color. <laughs> oh. All right, friends. Hey, Christopher. Um, I'm not certain what your your question is about the stuff they're growing the cannabis with on a medical level. Um, I can't tell if that's in response because the way we see them in the in our feed, it's just all one after the other. So I can't tell if that's in response to someone else's comment or if it's a question. Oh, PGR. Right. Um, yeah, Chris, you, you'd have to, I'd have to ask each specific, um, cultivation facility if they are using PGR. I just, I don't know that answer, uh, off the top of my head and they're all different. What I can tell you is that products have to be clean before it can be sold to patients. And Virginia does have some of the most stringent um, consumer safety standards for medical cannabis in the state. I mean, in the country, <laughs> only ones in the state, but in the country. Um, there are some states that don't even require third party lab testing. I mean, isn't that wild? Like, first of all, gross. Second, I wouldn't want to buy something that wasn't tested. I mean, like, my phone is regulated. I know that there's nothing in this lotion that I just put on my hand. Like, and if you're going to set something on fire and inhale it, like, well, I want to be real sure that that's not going to make someone sick. And that's what we've done here in Virginia. Um, fortunately, we do have some of the best uh, consumer safety standards um, here in the country. <laughs> I love the debate about PGR going on. So yeah, um, hey, uh, Christopher, I'll, I'll ask around and see what um, responses I get. But, um, you know, product does have to be clean before it hits the shelves. And if you think it's not, then let us know. All right, friends, um, this has been delightful as ever.
And if you have questions later, hey, drop them in the chat. Um, also be sure that you hit that like, follow, or subscribe button wherever you're watching so you get notified when we go live. You can always watch us afterwards too. Um, hey, if you got questions, drop them in there. Otherwise, you can email us if you have a question about chapters. You can email us at chapters at normal.org. If you got a question about the Normal Legal Committee, you can email me at nlc at normal.org. Hey, you got a question about Virginia? You can email us at info at virginianormal.org. Just click message on Facebook or uh, on LinkedIn or on Instagram, even though you're not watching this on Instagram because StreamYard doesn't stream to Instagram. Um, listen, this has been great. I am excited to start my weekend. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all back here next week to do this all again. Hey, we have a new uh, a, a new offering at Normal. It's called Normal's Weekend Weed Read. It's a quick digest of all the uh, top things that happened in cannabis policy uh, this week. It's a quick rundown for you. It delivers to mailboxes um, Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. It's super fun. And if you want to subscribe to it, just head to normal.org slash subscribe. Even if you're already a subscriber, you can click that Weekend Weed Read button. Make sure you get it this Saturday in your inbox. <laughs> all right, friends. Hey, you all have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.